Hello and welcome back. This is Double O Debbie, and this is episode 86 of my Direwolf 21.18 Let's Play. And today uh, we're back here and we're going to go over a few of the things I've been up to today because I've been busy. <laughs> um, been busy. So let's go see what I've done. I've done a lot. I've been playing around with the reactors. Uh, as I learned some about them today, uh, things that I didn't know, uh, <laughs> so I wanted to change them and make them a little bit better. So I changed around uh, this reactor to be the donut shape uh, with endurium blocks in the middle, and that increased the power output of my two small reactors from 3.2 to 4.5 uh, and I believe it's a little bit more fuel efficient uh, I don't remember. Uh, but it's definitely more power and that allowed me once I got the the power of these two uh, reactors uh, upped a little bit and allowed me to take that bigger one offline uh, because I combined all my power to just one channel instead of three different ones so that uh, <laughs> I could see how much I needed. And then once I saw that it was under the 9K, I, I started playing around with my big extreme reactor. And this is what I've come up with. So yeah, I converted this one over to, so it's also doing 4.6 uh, as well, which is groovy. Um, so let's look at the reactor. It's as big as I could get it in here and leave like a little, I probably could have come out one more, honestly, but uh, I kind of like this design. It gives me could have put like an extra row in there, uh, but <laughs> I've got all of the reactor control rods in the middle. There's a lot less fuel rods than the checkerboard pattern that I had, but this is producing almost as much power. Uh, but this is actually um, cool enough that it's only doing 0.6 a, a fuel burn up rate, which is way better than the the checkerboard pattern. Um, and even then, uh, like I had some smaller donuts uh, spread out through the area, like in the corners, uh, but and that was like a lot of power, but it was still way too hot. It was like a two <laughs> a two burn up rate it was was it 1.5 it was two above two so i was like no i, I don't want to do that uh, so this is a lot better than the other ones so i'm keeping this going uh, until i can get something better this will allow me to do some upgrades which some of them i've already done like i immediately went over into the uh, or laser base section <laughs> and I updated well I added uh, 24 more of the laser drills above and below the middle um, just so to increase the amount of ores I'm getting because I'm using way more now I need those extra ores uh, see uh, I also went to the nether uh, because I hadn't seen any increase in my ancient debris at all uh, for quite some time. And I went to the nether and realized that I didn't chunk loaded the chunk that the laser drill was in. So that's why I hadn't hit any. So I loaded the chunk up and came back and it's already got me eight more ancient debris. Uh, and that's just with the base laser uh the ore laser base and four laser drills. So uh, 
I really need to get more laser drills onto that setup as well. Uh, I'm not sure how much this is pulling. It looks like maybe nine, 9,000 at the tick. It's alternating. So I'm not sure if it's taking nine and then, yeah, I think it is. I think it's taking 15. So I could maybe do another, could do another setup. If I increase my nether one, I would still have enough power to run both of them off of that one reactor. Uh, and that leaves me the two baby ones that are producing another nine to uh, upgrade. Hopefully it'll be enough power to where I can upgrade some of my uh, my mech machines to be like the next tier up uh, so that they can have more slots and process more stuff. <laughs> uh, because I'm probably going to be needing that very soon. Very soon. I did put all the, uh, the add-ons in those machines too. Uh, and I did make some changes to the mechanism area for slight changes. Um, <laughs> Jake reminded me that you can set these machines next to each other and feed them one into the other. And I, I like knew this, but <laughs> temporary lapse, I, I didn't do that. Uh, so this is the, the whole processing section without taking it out of the machine, putting it into the network and then bring it back out into another machine and then back into the network. And then, you know, uh, this is much easier. I bring it into this machine and then it feeds over and then it feeds over and then it gets smelted. And I have all the upgrades in these. And since I got my power situated, uh, my electrolytic separator is actually keeping up because I was having problems with it not having enough power to produce the oxygen, oxygen that it needed for this. So it's been keeping up a lot better. So I'm happy with that. <laughs> very, very happy with that. And it looks like um, the system is keeping up with all the increase in the uh, raw ores that I'm receiving and the chunks. I don't see any chunks in there either. And even the, uh, the ore that I'm getting from, uh, from it that I have to process through thermal series, is it's even keeping up with that. So I'm very happy <laughs> that I increased my production what that tells me, though, is that I need to produce more. <laughs> I have enough power. Uh, I should, well, I can either get a second four laser base going in the overworld, or I could get the, the, the one in the nether beefed up, uh, like this one, I, which I think is what I'll do because I also need... Um, you know, the, the quartz and the glowstone from the nether, which I'm not sure exactly what all drops from the nether one. Uh, so I'm not sure what I need to, to process all that. Uh, there could be stuff in there that I'm, I'm getting uh, that I don't even know about. Uh... I don't know. I don't think I've been getting very much nether quartz. And glowstone, I got a lot out of the mob farm. I'm getting a lot out of the mob farm from the witches, I guess. And now, um, I believe the glowstone is coming out of the blocks. It's coming out of the ore laser in the overworld which is weird. Uh, 
because I, I could have swore I watched it and I saw some glowstone coming over. I'll, uh, I'll take a quick peek and see if we can see uh, what's coming out. Oh, I went in the wrong one. I meant the ore. Face face. I went the wrong way. So let's just look in here. There's coal, gold, ores. Oh, maybe it was the nether one. Now that I'm thinking about it. Because I just peeked in there a few minutes before I started recording. It's probably why I remembered the glowstone. Yeah, because I'm not seeing it here. I was just wondering if because I had the yellow laser lens it was getting it. But I'm pretty sure I have the yellow uh, for the nether so that I can get more glowstone. And the brown, I did brown for uh, the ancient debris and then I'm pretty sure I did um, yellow for glowstone. I don't remember. Uh, so let's go look. I built like a little building in there uh, to enclose it, make it a little bit safer and protect it from those evil gas that want to destroy my stuff. And I put the floor, I made the floor out of glass so nothing could spawn inside of it. Uh, so I should be able to come in here it's not a fancy building yet, uh, but it is a building. And I kind of made the power on the outside here so that I could uh, be prepared for adding more laser drills to this. So let's look at the lasers. Yeah, four brown ones for the ancient debris, which there was just an ancient debris. A yellow for glowstone and a white for quartz. Uh, so, yeah, and then I took it to depth 15 because that's supposed to be the level that you get uh, you get ancient free at. That was just something red, I think, redstone. Niter. Or it could have been cinnabar. Niter, since uh, this is giving, like, niter. Iridium. That's probably from the white. Silver. Diamond. Got a diamond ore from the nether? That's whack. Certus quartz. Osmium. Nickel. Yeah, even though I have all of those brown laser lenses, it's not it's not very common that you get the ancient debris. There was this one. So this is doing good. I plan on adding um, all the laser drills to this and upgrading them. I, I still got to make eight to finish off this section. And then I got to add 24 more and put in all the add-ons. <laughs> oh, man. And I put glass on top of this. Uh, that's so that they can't spawn on top of any of the stuff, uh, any of the machines once they're placed. I just don't want things in here. <laughs> I'm very paranoid about losing that. Not safe in the nether. Uh, so I probably will if I ever find myself lacking in something to do, might go and just revamp that whole nether area and make it all <laughs> All zombie pigmen free. Ha ha ha. All right. So that's basically what I've been up to. Um, I did I did actually run out of sand. I need... Uh, like, I, I really love all the R's magic mod. And I love all of the magic mods that are in this... But compared to some of the 
tech mods that are more industrialized, they just don't produce like an industrial farm would. Uh, like, I know an industrial foregoing uh, animal farm. I mean, I probably don't need an upgrade for the meat. Get my meat. Uh, I mean, I've got over 3,000 raw beef and mutton, over 2,000 pork. This is more than enough for me for my own personal use uh, to feed me. <laughs> uh, so I don't really need it for personal use. Uh, it's just for anything that I might need a more industrialized uh, use for. And for one, I... I need a tree farm because I, with the reactors, the way I set up all of my charcoal and my steel <laughs> is I'm using dark oak wood to make charcoal and then the charcoal is turn, in turn used to make steel and it's also now being used to, since I switched over to the mech, uh, version of making steel because the immersive engineering one just, was just taking too long and I needed so much steel that I couldn't wait that long. So not only is the mechanism version uh, cheaper in the beginning to make steel, so if you look at steel uh, recipe, um, it's the, the immersion, immersion, no, not the arc furnace, it's the blast furnace. So this takes one minute to turn one piece of iron into steel. Um, uh, now I have the, uh, the doodads on the side forgot what they are called. They're like a bellows or something. I have those on there to help speed it up. I don't know if maybe you can add more or if it's just that my water wheel isn't producing enough power to uh, increase it. Oh, it's a preheater. So I, I think there's only two slots for this. So that's probably all that you can do. Uh, but yeah, it was taking so long to get them all done. Uh, and this takes, for every steel, you have to burn four charcoal. And so the amount of steel I needed, that was just a lot of charcoal as well. Uh, but for the mechanism version, let me show you what I'm talking about. If you look at it and you go to, uh, oh, here it is, uh, the, the energized smelter. And this is how you make uh, steel using this. But I guess technically, since you have to process this twice and it has to go through uh, to get the steel grit, uh, you do the metallurgic infuser and you need 10 millibuckets. Oh, actually it is right. That's one piece of charcoal to turn enriched iron into steel grit. But you also need uh, one piece of charcoal and one iron to make the enriched iron. So you actually only use two pieces of charcoal in the base recipe for um for steel but if you use the enriched carbon which i do you actually get 80 millibuckets per charcoal which means that you can make four steel off of one piece of charcoal <laughs> and that's way better because I was making so much steel that I needed a lot more wood. So now I, I can keep an eye on my carbon when it's out, make a couple of stacks uh, so that it can keep my steel going. <laughs> 
and you can see it's uh, my machine is automatically just loading that up uh, because I just made a lot of steel uh, getting all the reactor parts and I I now have lots of reactor parts spare because I took a lot of the fuel rods out of the reinforced and I originally built it out of the basic because I I didn't the last time I played ex, or big reactors there wasn't a reinforced version you just had the basic uh, but you only needed a different type of casing to make the turbines <laughs> so that's what I was expecting so I made a whole bunch of reactor fuel rods and control rods and and stuff <laughs> so yeah uh, another idea that I had because I was looking at the reactor that I made the really big one and I put it in a compact machine that was 11 by 11 by 11 uh, and I built pretty much as big of a one as I could. I think now I could redo it and pull it out one more closer to the front wall and add another row of uh, a fuel rods in there if I wanted to. But it would uh, it would take a lot of work tearing it down, stopping it, and uh, rebuilding it. And I would ha have to make sure that uh, I hadn't I get to turned off those uh, machines, uh, the drills, uh, so that I would still have enough power to run uh, run the base off of the two little ones. But I was thinking maybe I, I had an idea because my two little five by five by five reactors are producing 4.5 each. Uh, 4.5k fe a tick uh, and I think I could fit eight of those <laughs> in an 11 by 11 by 11 giant machine I think if I'm doing the math right I should have a one wide gap in between all eight uh, so I should be able to get in there <laughs> squeeze in and and hook them all up uh, that's my plan because technically eight of those basic uh, reactors, the beginning ones, the five by five by five, will produce 4.5k. And if you just count the four multiplied by eight, that's 32k, <laughs> which is a little bit more than the, the big reactor that I just built. Uh, so yeah i'm i'm just uh i'm kind of doing the math and i'm like why did i make a, a big reactor like that but um in order to run the turbines um you can use like a small a small lure you could even use a basic uh, reactor a five by five and uh, run several turbines off of it and each turbine might only produce 15k but the fact that you could run multiples off of it makes it more efficient so as long as uh, we like got off of you know 15k and we built two turbines we're already producing more than or the same as the passive reactor that I built down there so if you can fit more than two on there that's more efficient uh, especially since it's a smaller reactor you're going to be burning less fuel and it's going to be more fuel efficient and lower burn rate so it is pretty efficient to do it like that and I'm hoping to get there, <laughs> uh, but I have to run, I have to burn the uranium and turn it into cyanide. And right now, I only have 
561 cyanide. Um, so I'd, I'm not sure how much I would need for a turbine, but all the turbines in the videos that I've seen, and Jake showed me a picture of his, their turbines were huge <laughs> and, and they were all running off in this little bitty reactor. Uh, so, <laughs> um, what are turbine casings looking like? Uh, let's do uh, reactor. That should list uh, like. You probably have to do, no, I think I looked at it and the turbines only, uh, only use cyanide and they have the basic turbine housing, uh, which just uses iron. Uh, I don't know the difference in that, like if you can only build, uh, a certain size of turbine with the basic uh, so that would be good to know oh boy uh, but it does take the turbine housing basic so in the the reinforced recipe oh and you can interchange the glass with the housing uh that's pretty neat nifty and you can turn a controller back into the housing oh that's neat oh you also have the recipe to use a block of iron like i don't know um i think uh you know the turbine housing it takes sign i guess depends on what you value more your iron or your cyanide uh but this also takes a block of redstone so uh, if you have problems with redstone and cyanide then the block of iron might be better <clears throat> so yeah um all kinds of nifty things to the only thing about uh the turbines is i would need a really big area to set this up in uh, to put uh different all the different uh turbine multi-block structures around it uh, so i don't know even what kind of a building that would be built in maybe i could uh go all the way down to bedrock and just tunnel out the earth and build a huge massive reactor well not a a turbine setup down there because uh, i always i always dream about building an underground base i don't know why that is so appealing <laughs> having having an underground base i mean every world I play in. I have some part of my base underground. Uh, sometimes I go crazy and I say, well, I'm going to put everything underground. <laughs> I'm not going to go. I'm not ever going to see the light of day. Uh, but I do, I do like building on the outside too. Uh, but sometimes it's just like, uh, I don't know you just don't want to worry about the outside packaging and you just want to focus on the meat of it the functionality and and not have to worry about dressing things up to make them look nice uh, although i would probably do that anyway on the inside though uh on the inside the inside it's all that matters right uh, so yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the things I've been working on and the things that I want to start working on, uh, next. So I'm probably going to work on 
updating the other one or building a second in the overworld. I'm not sure which. I might go for the overworld because my processing system seems to be able to handle one fully upgraded laser drill. <laughs> so that means I need another one. Right? <laughs> so if I find that area where my I'm producing more than I can process, and then I can go and upgrade uh, my processing plant to, to process more. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye!